We're here in Boston at Brigham and Women's Hospital, and we're about to get a crash course in how to deal with a medical emergency in space. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> smoke seems to be going down, so, and the alarm <laughs> stopped, so we should be Check out so it doesn't overheat and cause more problems. Okay. Okay, I'm in the front. We're getting right. it going. NASA astronauts go into space when they're at their peak physical ability. But like the rest of us, they can still get sick. And when that happens, it's not as if they can just drive to the hospital. Astronauts in low Earth orbit, like those on the International Space Station, still have constant contact with ground control if there's a medical emergency. A flight surgeon can talk them through it and provide professional expertise. Astronauts flying to Mars won't have that luxury. They'll need to solve emergencies on their own without much help from Earth. And that's why we've come to the Stratus Center. It specializes in medical simulations, from doctoring robotic dummies to using virtual reality to practice microscopic surgery. Stratus received funding from NASA to build its own spacecraft sickbay, where they run medical emergency simulations. While astronauts are currently trained in basic medical procedures, this program is focused on how teams should behave during a medical emergency on a deep space mission, and what it will take to work autonomously, without constant support from ground control. So what I love about this center is that, you know, we're in a regular old hospital hallway, and then we turn here, and we're in space. Incredible, right? <laughs> I have to hand it to y'all, it looks like you ripped it straight out of a sci-fi movie. <laughs> oh, thanks. Well, we had, we had a lot of uh, input from experts from NASA, and it's based on the Destiny module, so it's the same kind of height and, and width, so you, it feels compact, right. just as in space. Weight is yeah. such an issue for, for launching. Yeah. So how did you decide what tools you would need? You know, what are some of the basics that you have to have? Payload is a huge concern and this, even things like fluid. So we use a lot of IV fluid in the hospital. That's so heavy to take fluid, so you right. can't really do that. And so we've got like a basic um, cardiac um, kit, a respiratory kit, like a first aid kit that you would have with bandages and gauze mm -hmm. and so on. It's a low resource um, health care environment. So, I suit up for the simulations. We're gonna run through three of them. A common emergency, a dire medical emergency, and a full out meltdown situation. The common medical situation we dealt with first was cardiac arrhythmia, or an irregular heartbeat. How are her vital signs? The pulse ox is 96 and heart rate's about 140. Blood pressure is okay. 128 Can you over get a 70. EKG? So the stickers, it tells you where to put them. So right, left, upper and lower. I'm looking at the images from the monitor right now, and I think you're going to need to give her some medication. We're just, we're just one, two, three, medicines in. So we got to pause on the monitor, and heart rate's back. It's slower. I think we're good. She's looking much better. Woo, we did it. I think. <laughs> Next, we faced a more dire medical emergency. Ripley had a collapsed lung and I got to try out my shot giving skills. Just go right in and you should hear a rush Looks of like air. Your is maybe a little bit better. We were really thinking now of, of how does the crew um, deal with these events in a semi-autonomous or autonomous way. If you have an acute episode and it's 20 minutes to wait for a response from the flight surgeon on the ground, yeah. you don't have that functionality. You need answers you've, now. You've got to do it. So, yeah. how, so the crew then has to work autonomously. But we're lucky in these simulations. We have communication with ground control to help us through these trainings. And good thing too, because our last test, we faced a critical emergency. Toxic exposure, plus a ship malfunction on top of that. Hi, we have an alarm going off. It looks like we have a, a leak, maybe an ammonia leak. An issue with the ship causes a toxic ammonia leak. We need to put on our personal protective equipment. We don't have time for, we don't have time for that. Like your solar panels are overheating. Oh, okay. <laughs> On top of all of this, one of our solar panels starts overheating, which we have to address for the safety of the entire crew. All right, we need to get that solar panel shut down so it doesn't overheat and cause more problems. Okay. Okay, I'm in the front. We're getting right. it going. Okay. What should we do now? Okay, hold on. Can we put the solar panel on pause? We need to talk about Ripley. Wait, no, we can't put that on pause. Okay, That's so mission critical. what does Brett need to do to isolate the solar panel problem? So he needs to go into control panel three. Go to control panel three. Control panel three. Section J. Section J. All right. <coughs> 
Oh. Okay, that's the scenario over. Ah! Control. We control. failed! <laughs> These simulations help teams practice better communication and learn how to work together efficiently under stress. If you're dealing with a new emergency, you don't want to be figuring out how to work together at the same time. In an extraterrestrial environment, simulating things before they actually occur, figuring out the ergonomics of how do you take care of patients under very challenging circumstances is a real opportunity to Im improve the care that we provide potential patients in the uh, space uh, in, in a space mission. And you only you can't really go to space all the time and practice. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, you can't go to space all the time to practice. So doing this is at least the beginning of the uh, work towards improving the care, quality of care in, in space medicine. No astronauts have gone through these simulations yet, but Stratus plans to do more behavioral studies and improve their sick bay simulations, and their methods could be incorporated into astronaut training someday. So I think it's clear that I have a lot more medical training I need to do before I'm equipped to deal with one of these emergencies in space. I think it's clear that NASA does too. They're gonna have to do a lot of simulations like this one before they send astronauts to Mars. NASA is still many years away from sending crews into deep space, but when that time comes, simulations like these will be critical to training crews to work together so that they'll be able to handle emergencies without much help from home. We can hook him up to our monitors to make sure that he's doing well and stable. I feel like he's judging us. <laughs> he's very non-judgmental. Okay, good. 